I'm sure you and probably most people have heard about this crazy legal fight that's going on between Apple and Epic Games. That lawsuit has the ability to single-handedly change from one day to another the mobile app space as we know it. But the reason why I bring it up is because a few weeks ago, we got the conclusion to another lawsuit that just might be setting the stage for the epic conclusion between Apple and Epic Games. This is Techonomics. Hey, it's Carlos, always trying to provide you with insight on technology and how it's affecting you and the world at large. While this video isn't so much about technology specifically and more about lawsuits, the reality is that it will have repercussions that affect technology in ways that are virtually unimaginable. So let's get some context. So what the hell am I talking about? Well, tell me if you heard this before. The argument is Apple functionally acts like a monopoly when it comes to their app store. Now you might ask why or how? And the answer is quite simple. Apple's app store is completely and totally controlled by them. Not only that, they don't allow for alternative app stores to exist. So if you wanna download an application onto an iOS device, it all has to be done through them. That in turn gives them a ton of power because you as a consumer do not have choice and are forced to follow their guidelines when it comes to what apps you can download. And the cherry on top is that it doesn't only affect you as a consumer, it affects the developers of those apps as well. They are forced to comply with every little guideline that Apple puts and there's absolutely nothing that they can do about it because Apple has complete control over the means by which they deliver the app to you, the consumer. As for the case that I'm talking about, there's actually a specific part that Apple makes sure to have absolute control over. The money. How? Well, in the terms of service for distributing an app through their app store, they state that they get a 30% cut of every app purchase. But not only the purchase of every application, that also includes 30% of every purchase through the app. That could be everything from subscription services to Spotify and Netflix to in-app purchases of Hearthstone and Pokemon Go. For every dollar you spend in these apps, Apple gets 30%. And to make it worse, they don't even let you work around it by linking to a third-party site to let you sign up there. If you try to push users to find an alternative, then they'll just ban your app from the App Store. I should make a note that as of last year, Apple did make an exception to only charge 15% for companies that make less than $1 million a year through the Apple App Store. So as you can imagine, this negatively affects app developers because they make less and less money, which gets to the big case that I'm talking about. Because of these unfair business practices, a bunch of app developers filed a class action lawsuit. And in late August, 2021, Apple settled for $100 million. And while some see this payout as an admission of guilt, I'm not that optimistic. That said, the biggest benefit is that now app developers are allowed to contact their customers to notify them of alternative ways of paying for subscription services or in-app purchases. This is a huge deal because of how restrictive Apple has been for the better part of a decade. But frankly, the biggest question is if this is just the beginning and how it's going to affect the lawsuit with Epic Games. So why is this so relevant to the Apple versus Epic suit? Well, in that lawsuit, basically the same issue is in question. You have to remember how the lawsuit got started. Epic Games out of nowhere decided to change their payment processing for the Fortnite iOS app, in turn violating Apple's terms of service. As a result, to the surprise of literally no one, Apple kicked Fortnite off the App Store. That led to Epic starting a whole ad campaign about how abusive Apple has been to their developers, concluding with them actually suing Apple. In turn, Apple is suing them back for breach of contract and is asking for 30% from the money that they should have gotten from their in-app purchases as well as the cost of lawyers. And to be clear, this is a vast oversimplification. There is a bunch of details and minutia around this case that I'm just glossing over, but that's just the gist of it. But with that out of the way, it should be clear why these two cases are so relevant to each other. Epic made the move to change the payment processing because they didn't want Apple to get their 30% cut. In the same way, the small app developers are suing Apple for abusive business practices by doing the exact same thing. 
Now, Apple has changed some of their policies, making people question, me included, if that, at least in some part, grants legitimacy to Epic's entire point that it is totally BS that Apple gets 30% of all the in-app purchases. That said, I'm sure Epic would argue that Apple hasn't gone far enough. And frankly, Epic's move with the app under their current guidelines would still be a violation. So either way, both parties have a vested interest in having the lawsuit continue. Nonetheless, it is pretty clear that this settlement from Apple has the possibility to make major waves that could have a significant effect on the Epic versus Apple lawsuit ruling. So while writing this script, another story came out. South Korea passed a law requiring app stores like Apple's and Google's to allow for apps to have payment processing from other sources besides their own. This is a clear indication that Korea, at least, sees the status quo as an abuse of power from giant tech companies. And given the fact that this is an issue with multiple parties doing the abuse of power, in this case, Apple with the iOS app store and Google with the Android app store, it isn't something that can just be swept under the rug and ignored. Suffice to say that it seems like there seems to be a ton of momentum in favor of Epic Games. Apple does have a ton of lobbying power and influence on their side, but things seem to be slowly but surely turning in favor of Epic. It isn't so much that I would feel comfortable saying that they have it in the bag, but I definitely think it's safe to say that they have a way better chance than I would have ever imagined just a few months ago. And now it's just about waiting and seeing. Hey guys, thanks for watching another video. Please hit that like button, it is always appreciated, and comment down below on your thoughts on my analysis. While making this video, the conclusion to the Apple vs Epic suit just got handed out, so I want to know your thoughts. Again, as always, it's Carlos from Techonomics, over and out.